Okay, everyone. Uh, what's up? It's Goldie here, and we are hopefully quickly going to be going over uh, some ownership and projections that we've got uh, coming into week 10. Um, it is late in the week. We've only got a couple of, of practice days left, and <clears throat> most of the industry has all of their projections uh, in, uh, we do have, you know, initial ownership numbers. Uh, they're starting to flesh out a little bit as we get some more information, but, um, you know, keep an eye out for updates. We'll be updating them a couple of more times as we go through the weekend, but, uh, they are up on the site and should be available in SaberSim as well. So, um, feel free to play around with those and, as I have kind of looked through the slate, we're just going to kind of be going over, um, you know, everything that uh, that I've seen so far. Maybe we can find some some outliers here or there. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, we really only have a couple of games this week. I think that we want to target um, at least of totals or games with totals uh, projecting in the upper 40s. Um, most everything else is in the really low 40s. We've only got one game, I believe, in the mid 40s, and that is the Dallas Green Bay game. And honestly, um, that's kind of a boring game. So <clears throat> most everything seems to be pretty obvious in how or where we want to attack. Um, in in that regard. Can we get contrarian with it? Yeah, sure. Uh, so let's kind of get into it. Cleveland-Miami here. Um, this is one of the high total games. Favorite way to play this, I think, is just going to be Jacoby Brissett. Uh, really do like him in this spot. Miami's got kind of a um, a rough pass defense. You know, We know that their offense is very capable and, and can score, uh, but that's really due in part uh, to their, their defense not being very good, right? <clears throat> so... Really like getting to Jacoby Brissett here. Doesn't have a whole lot of upside in general in this spot, though. I think this is is very, very playable at 54. Um, only projecting kind of in the mid range here uh, for quarterbacks, but good point per dollar play, decent value play as well, and low ownership. So I think this is a really really strong way to attack this game. Uh, Amari and DPJ both playable as well. Not super stoked about 6500 Amari, but uh, I think it's a perfectly playable price. Um, Nick Chubb, I, I really do like as well. Miami is attackable on the ground for sure. And Cleveland's biggest strength certainly is the run game. So uh, 8,100 Nick Chubb, not stoked about the price tag necessarily. And you're not going to see with this aggregate projection, not going to see... Um, you know, very strong point per dollar or value projections on him, but uh, naturally that drags his ownership down. So at 5%, I think getting um, with the field at, you know, sub 10% ownership on Nick Chubb pretty much every week whenever this happens is warranted because he can pop for 30 very, very quickly. Um, this week in particular, if we are expecting points, I think getting to some Kareem Hunt at 5,300 is okay as well. They're not using him in the rush game necessarily. It's more so in the passing game, and he does still have a decent bit of touchdown equity. So if you are playing this game a bunch of different ways, um, and I think that's a, a pretty decent way to approach it with some low ownership here, um, make sure we can you know, mix in some Kareem Hunt at 5,300. I think he's got a little bit of upside to outperform this price. Wouldn't go crazy with it. Wouldn't get 10, a full 10% necessarily. Um, but I think, you know, getting with the field 5 to 8% is, is probably pretty okay. I would personally stay off of David Njoku uh, at 4,100. They just don't use the tight end enough. Um, 2,300 for the Browns defense, even at a super cheap price tag. They're a decent pivot off of the Vikings, who we'll get to in the next game, who are going to be very chalky. Um, so that's fine if you want to play it that way. And playing a cheap defense that's coming in under 5%, I think is usually okay in most scenarios. Uh, you got to be careful, though, because obviously Miami can score. Um, on the other side, with Miami, they are coming in uh, a little, you know, depressed ownership wise um naturally Tyreek we're seeing ownership on him uh he is probably the top projected play on the week I think um 
and it's pretty it's pretty much blanket across the industry very low standard deviation and that is a measure of all of the projection systems that we are bringing in here uh, so the market is saying we're all we're pretty confident that Tyreek is going to have a, a, a decent um, decent showing this weekend so that's what that number is, is saying there um, point per dollar and value wise uh, it's really hard for somebody to outperform a $9,100 price tag. So um, that's why these numbers are a little bit lower. But 18% ownership is really the number that I balk at. Excuse me. Um, at 9,100, it's, it's, it's difficult to get to a, a full 20% Tyreek. And if you want to, if you really, really like Tyreek this week, you kind of have to come in, um, you know, at... 35 percent or something like that to really make it worth it uh 25 percent is okay but you're not getting all that much leverage on the field if you only come in seven percent over right so at 9100 if you come in at 25 percent then most of your builds are going to be super similar so you kind of have to be pretty right um, and that's really how you get kind of pigeonholed in into lineup constructions um so i'd be careful with that Personally, I would come in underweight on Tyreek, but I do think getting exposure to the Miami offense on a weekly basis is a pretty good idea. Um, it's hard to stack them, though. 9,100, 6,700 for Tua, 76 for Jalen Waddell. Really, really aggressive price tags here. Uh, what is that, an average of 7,800 for the three of them? Um, it's really difficult to get to. Unfortunately, we can't really make it cheaper with all that much or all that high a probability and getting to, you know, adding a, a running back into the stack in exchange for one of the receivers because they're not very good running the football. Um, and now they've got both Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson back here, both of whom are very capable, but not if they're not getting the work, right? And and Miami's rush offense is not where they make their, their money. So... Um, Mike Kosicki, I think is, is the way to do it. If you're full stacking Miami, um, probably not a way that I would approach it this week. I'd prefer to play Cleveland on the other side. Uh, but if I were going to do it with Miami, I'd play Tua with either Tyreek or Jalen Waddle and then run it with a Mike Kosicki as well. Um, Dolphins defense, I would probably stay off of 3,600. I think they're a little overpriced. Do like Cleveland on the other side. Moving on quickly to... Oops, Minnesota and Buffalo. <clears throat> um, now, we don't know if Josh Allen's going to play here. And this really, I mean, it, most of the industry is is projecting him out. Um, and that would, at, at least in the betting markets, you know, we saw this number open earlier in the week at uh, Buffalo minus 7.5 and, and a total of 48. It's currently sitting at Buffalo minus 3 at a total of 42. Okay, so that is tanked in both uh, respects. Now, this is in Buffalo, and this game could be, you know, in like a snowstorm. Uh, I have not checked personally, so that could be contributing to the total move as well. Um, and that's probably what it is. That, that'd just be my hunch, because the six-point total move, just because we moved from Josh Allen to Case Keenum, um, seems a little bit of an over-adjustment, if that's what happened. So... That said, um, given where the numbers are currently sitting at Minnesota three and a half, and uh, excuse me, Minnesota plus three and a half, uh, Buffalo minus three and a half, and a total of 42, um, I'm not super enthused about getting to some pretty expensive pieces over here uh, for the Vikings. 8,800 Justin Jefferson, you can play him every single week. It doesn't really matter, um, but you know, 8,800 in a really you know, kind of a bad matchup he's going to get Tredavious White and and the Bills secondary Bills pass defense really really good um their pass rush is also very good so Kirk Cousins is going to be under some pressure here and he might not be able to get the ball out as quickly as would be necessary to to really see Justin Jefferson pop off at this price tag so something to be aware of there that said, he's going to be 6% owned, so you can play him. Um, it, it's perfectly fine. Kirk Cousins at 6000 I think, is also a playable price, um, given where the total currently sits in the game and that this is – I don't like attacking Buffalo at all. Um, I'd probably stay off of it. Um, 
but that's just personal preference. If you do like the the Vikings here, I don't think playing Cousins at this price is bad. And we do know where the targets are going to go. They're going to go to Jefferson. They're going to go to Thielen. But we also have T.J. Hawkinson in the mix now at 5,300. I think this is probably uh, my favorite play from the Vikings offense this week. Um, would prefer to kind of stay off of Dalvin Cook at 8,000. Their run defense, the Bills, is also excellent. Um and 5,400 for Adam Thielen, I'm also not super enthused about. But they are trying to work in TJ Hawkinson quite a bit more. And at 5,300, nobody's going to play him because, well, frankly, he's too expensive. Um, but, you know, they gave him, I think, seven targets last week or something like, something like that. Um, and at, you know, depressed ownership, sub 5%, I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, very, very playable. 2,200, I talked about this, you know, briefly. You know, in the last game, here's the Vikings at 14% ownership as of right now. Um, high standard deviation, so market is, I mean, this is a defense. There's going to be some fluctuation in the projections of, in, in the ownership projections of a defense. Uh, and it's also going to depend wildly on what type of tournament you're playing. Uh, if you're playing in tournaments, and mass multi-entry tournaments, he's probably going to come in, he uh, the Vikings defense is probably going to come in uh, quite a bit higher than this. It's like in the milli, I bet you see 20% on the Vikings. Um, in the slant, you're probably going to see a really solid 16, 18% on the Vikings. Low stakes, mass multi-entry, you're going to see the same type of deal. In single entry, uh, you'll probably see elevated ownership as well. So overall, I think this is probably this number is probably low. Uh, because you you just have a tendency to see defenses steam really, really hard when, I mean, they probably shouldn't. Because let's get to the Bills on the other side. If Josh Allen is out, okay, we're seeing him still projected in here. Uh, and I load these projections with anybody that um, has a projection and an ownership projection. So if... If that's coming in uh, when I run the aggregates, he's still going to show up over here. But that's why you see a very high standard deviation. Some some places don't have him at all. Um, others have him with a, a tiny number. Others have him with his normal production numbers coming in. So super noisy, and we'll, we'll just have to wait to see if he's actually going to go. But as I said, the betting markets are suggesting at the moment that it is going to be Case Keenum. Case Keenum is not bad, okay? He has been a starter in this league before. Um, doesn't have a whole lot of upside necessarily, but this was always a passing quarterback coming out of college, and it just hadn't translated necessarily to the NFL. But in this type of offense, with these type of weapons, and Steph Diggs, Gabe Davis, even in Isaiah McKenzie down here with the Dawson Knox at tight end, it's very possible that Case Keenum could still pop. Okay, he has been getting work all all week with the ones as Josh Allen hasn't practiced. So uh, something to keep in mind, and I think it's a, a decent spot to consider counter trading the market a little bit in that they are coming in or the market is coming in heavy on the Vikings defense because they're cheap and they're getting a backup quarterback. But Case Keenum is not your everyday backup quarterback. Okay, he's not a rookie. This guy is a veteran. He has been in the league for a very long time, and he's gotten work with the number one team all week. Okay, so this isn't like, hey, somebody got. We're not sure if he's if our starter is going to play, and we're just going to throw it because we don't want to play our backup quarterback who's bad or anything. You know, we're not going to release news. There or any of that kind of nonsense that we see. You know, with with other teams throughout the league. He that they're preparing as if Allen is going to be out. So um, that said, I think you can play Case Keenum at five thousand. Uh, generally, I would kind of balk at Steph Diggs at, at eighty three hundred. Um, certainly in a low total game, but this is against his old team, and he's going to want to feast against these guys. So I don't think getting Case Keenum um, and and some Steph Diggs teams here is is bad at all. Okay, it, Case Keenum at 5,000 flat makes 8,300 Steph Diggs a little bit more palatable. Uh, you can also play him, Keenum that is, with with Gabe Davis. 6,400 I'm less enthused about, not projecting nearly as high. So you kind of need uh, an outlier performance for Gabe Davis here at this price tag. Um, 
so I'd prefer to just run Keenum, Diggs, and then maybe run it back with a TJ Hawkinson or something like that. Uh, if you want to run a third piece, run a Dawson Knox or an Isaiah McKenzie with a Diggs. I think that's okay as well. But again, we just have to kind of be wary. If this is a weather game, uh, they may very well just like want to hand it off to Devin Singletary at 5,600. I think that's an okay, an okay price tag for him. Um, their rush offense isn't is is definitely uh, going to get a bump here. Um, it isn't what they normally focus on necessarily, right? With Josh Allen because he's got so much rushing upside, but Case Keenum's not going to run the ball, right? He's not going to rush. So it is going to be Singletary. If they have to lean on him in a snow game or something like that, who knows what's going on up in up in Buffalo? But uh, if that's the if that's the case, then I think Devin Singletary is a playable piece on on for the Bills as well. Bills defense, however, 3,700. Don't think this is is all that great. Um, seems a, a bit expensive, but if you want to run a weird sort of correlation team, Devin Singletary and the Bills, I don't think that's bad. Uh, so that's kind of how I'd prefer to play the game. Stack Keenum with Step Diggs and a, a cheaper piece, maybe even a Devin Singletary, Step Diggs, Case Keenum. I think that's all right. Um, or uh, a, a Keenum Diggs. McKenzie or a Keenum Diggs Knox, maybe run it back with Jefferson if you play Knox, or run it back with a TJ Hawkinson if you play like a McKenzie or something like that. So moving on, um, Houston and the Giants, another kind of low total game here. Uh, this total is sitting 41, and Giants open the week laying seven, I believe, um, and that number is way too high. That's been bet down aggressively. It's down to four and a half right now. So um, you've seen a lot of money come in on Houston, and the total has actually been bet up by three points as well. So we do see an interesting little dynamic there when we see play on the on the dog and total to the upside. That means more points are expected to be scored, and it's supposed to be a closer game, right? At least that's what the market is, is suggesting with those line movements, right? So... That said, I mean Minnesota, or excuse me, uh, Houston is not bad. Okay, they, they, I mean they're bad, right? But they play close games, um, and they still have some capable offensive pieces that you can get to. And as we can see here, we're seeing a lot of chalk come in on Damian Pierce. They want to run the football, and that's how the Giants are most attackable. It's it's on the ground. They have an okay pass defense. It's kind of middling. Um, but their biggest weakness is the run game and stopping the run. So um, good news for Houston. They want to run the football because they have Davis Mills back there under center, and they've only got Brandon Cooks catching the football. Um, Nico Collins is, it, I mean, if if this were any other team in football, he probably wouldn't be starting. So, Davis Mills and Brandon Cooks, they're really the only playable pieces in the passing game. Um, I, Davis Mills just doesn't have any upside. Even at 5,100, it's very, very difficult to even get him to pop for 25 points here. So uh, I do like Brandon Cooks at 5,300, though. He's not in the mid-6Ks like he was at the beginning of the season. So this is a much more playable price for him. And I, I think getting... Um, exposure to him while he's cheap and and really unowned like this is, is pretty warranted. So if you want to get off a little, get some some exposure to Houston, and kind of play that uh, that line movement game that the markets are are telling, um, or are portelling portelling to us, um, then. I think that's warranted. Uh, getting some Brandon Cooks off of the Damian Pierce 6,300 down to 5,300, save a thousand bucks, and you get a quarter of the ownership or, or whatever it is over here, right? So uh, I think that's an okay play. Um, probably not super high probability, but you know Brandon Cook's still going to get six, eight, ten targets here in this game, uh, and he can catch eight balls and and a score or two. So I think that's perfectly fine. Um, but I do like Damian Pierce, nonetheless. Uh, as I said, attacking the Giants is um, is pretty warranted on the ground in general. On the other side, Saquon is probably my favorite running back of the week. I think this ownership number on him is, is too low. Even at 8,600, um, he's certainly going to lead the way in terms of raw projection. 
uh, in the in the running back room this week. And in point per dollar, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get there with him because he's expensive, of course, right? But value-wise, which does incorporate uh, a bit of point per dollar, um, it is he is going to project pretty well here. So um, that said, if I were building teams right now, I'd probably end up coming in, if I just ran with projections, I'd probably end up with about 35%, 40% Saquon, uh, if I had to guess. So um, I, I really do like him, and getting to Houston, that's really the best way to attack them as well, is both is on the ground. So that's why you're seeing all of the ownership in this game come to the running backs. You know, they're, they're very clearly the best spots. Um, if we do want to get contrarian, maybe with the Giants, uh, I'm not super excited about it. Again, this is a total of 41, and Daniel Jones isn't really all that great. 5,700, I think, is an elevated price tag for him. Um, that said, point per dollar and value-wise, projecting pretty well. Uh, mid-18s for, you know, a 55, 5,800 dollar quarterback is a pretty decent number here. So we're getting him at 8%. If you want to play him... The issue I run into personally is who do you play him with? I mean, it's got to be Wandale, right, um, at 4,700 now that there's no Tony around. But the passing game for the Giants, um, you know, they want to run this through Saquon. So how I would play it if I were full stacking, the Giants would be Dimes, Saquon, and Wandale. And then I would run it back with a Brandon Cooks on the other side. Um, you could even play both running backs in this game. I don't think that's bad. In that event, I don't think I would stack it. I don't think I would have Dimes and Wandale Robinson uh, on the same team. So I'd play Saquon and, and like a Damian Pierce and then go stack a different game um, with the pass catchers or something like that. But uh, I think that is playable. Giants defense here, 3,900. Uh, yeah. Like it's okay. They're they're too expensive in general, and I generally don't like um, paying this much for a defense. You know, last week we could have gotten away with it. Two weeks ago we could have gotten away with it. Um, but this week I think it's it's really kind of aggressive. I think if you are gonna play it, um, play this sort of Saquon Giants running back defense correlation sort of move. Um, I think there are really like maybe half a dozen other spots where you can where you can do, consider doing that this week um, and you can get it with a cheaper defense so probably uh, probably nothing in the way of the Giants for me outside of Saquon and similar with Houston mostly just uh, some Damian Pierce lower ownership to the field I think um, that number at 29 30 percent is probably a little bit high uh, but Brandon Cooks, I do like it uh, at 5,300. So moving on to Denver, Tennessee. Let's try and quickly get through this. Um, I've been waiting for Denver to pop really all season, and they've shown flashes, and, man, they got a lot of talent here, man. Maybe Greg Dulcich is, is really how they're going to unlock it. Uh, I'm not... I'm not sure. Really waiting for it. Um, but he's probably the favorite tight end, my favorite tight end play of the week at 3,400. I think the the ownership is warranted. Uh, they're really going to try and use him a lot more. That said, if you do want to get off some of that ownership, if you're chalky elsewhere, and you don't just want to play a, a Greg Dulcich at 50-20% or whatever he's going to come in, um, he'll be popular. And... You know, in single entry stuff, he'll push 20% in in the the millie and the slant and stuff like that. Um, he'll probably also be pushing a good 20%. So the number he it, this will probably get steamed a little bit uh, going into the weekend. So you know, just be mindful of that. Uh, Judy and Cortland Sutton, I think these prices are are perfectly gettable. The workload between the two is basically split, uh, so they're projecting nearly identically, and um, market is pretty pretty convinced that they're very similar plays as well. So uh, I think it's perfectly fine. Russ 59, not super excited about this, um, but I think it's, you know, Russ under 6,000. He, he definitely has upside, uh, and he's got the talent around him to to produce at this price tag. In the backfield, Melvin Gordon and Lat Murray, uh, I don't think you can play really either one of these guys. Melvin Gordon, certainly not a 57. Um he just got butterfingers, right? Guy can't hang on to the football. So he has been better, that said. Um, near 
ever since he nearly lost his job. Um, but they've been giving more carries to Latavius Murray here. So uh, you got to be wary if you're playing Melvin Gordon. Um, I don't think we should be getting to him really at all. Don't think he has all that much upside uh, in this matchup. Um, Broncos defense 3,000, I think it's a pretty decent play. Uh, you could play, I mean, if, if you wanted to play like a, a crazy Greg Dulcich and, and Broncos correlation, I mean, the correlation for tight ends and, and defenses is non-zero. It is positive. Um, it's not as large as it is for a running back at a defense necessarily. Um, but it, it, it is it is positive and it is non-zero. So there's that. Take it take it for what it's worth. Um, you can also obviously just play the Broncos naked, uh, or you can play Dulcich naked. Do whatever, um, and that's probably the most equitable way to play them. But you know it, it is possible and and something to think about. On the other side, um, I think Denver can win this game. I'm not all that convinced that Tennessee is like really really good. They won five in a row or had won five in a row coming into their game against Kansas City, and they almost won that game. So let's not forget that Tennessee, when they get um, Derrick Henry rolling, they can be very, very dangerous. Uh, Ryan Tannehill is actually super, super efficient. And when he's got the pass catchers around him, they don't need to be all that efficient if they can really rely on De- on Derrick Henry and to you know, run the football and and open up the passing game for them. So uh, that said, I don't think you can play Tanny this week. Really, really like the price tag on him at 5,200, but I'm not sure he's fully healthy because we got some coach speak from Mike Vrabel this week coming out saying, well, okay, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, and I'm not all that enthused about, uh, you know, a head coach saying, hey, let's uh, let's see how it goes with my starting quarterback, right? So um, even though I believe we're going to get Traylon Burks back this week, he just had turf toe. uh, By his account, it sounds like he's healthy. He's not in any pain and not having any problems with it. So it sounds like they're going to try and activate him from IR this week. Um, So with him back, I really do like that price on him at 3,000. What I don't like is going after Denver's pass defense. They are very, very good. Um, and uh, like Denver would be 0 and 63 had they with as bad offense that they have, uh, if it weren't for their really, really good defense. So, um, if Traylon Burks comes back, hope he doesn't do anything this week. And then you can play him next week when they get a better matchup. So, um, really not much in the way of offense from the Titans for me. I don't want to attack Denver. And if I were going to do it, it would be with Tannehill and Traylon Burks uh, or short Derrick Henry pieces. I also don't want to play him necessarily at 8,300 and 20% ownership uh, against a really good run defense. So got to be careful there as well. Um, But naturally, if you're just kind of scripting teams, he's going to project well, good value, decent point per dollar play up in the upper range of the the running back price spectrum um so it's fine if you want to play derrick henry and the titans defense um as i mentioned that type of correlation play isn't the worst thing in the world the titans defense a little expensive here uh but at 3200 i think is perfectly playable given how bad denver's offense really has been so um not a hell of a lot of exposure in terms of offense. Would prefer Denver uh, and then maybe run it back with a Derrick Henry, run it back with a Traylon Burks or something like that. Would probably just stay off of Robert Woods, 4900 Not super excited uh, about that price tag. Uh, moving on, it's going to be one of the more popular games, Jacksonville and Kansas City. Um, Jacksonville is really starting to move the ball, and it's all coming through Travis Etienne. He was in winning tournament teams last week. Um, and 7100 I think this is a perfectly playable price for him. 19% ownership. I think this is kind of where he should be uh, at the moment for his, <clears throat> excuse me, his role in the offense. And really the upside of the offense itself. Um, I think it's kind of right in line. So that said, I don't think there's a whole lot of leverage that we can get on the field by playing him um, necessarily. But 
I, I think it's I think it's perfectly fine to get there. Not the greatest point per dollar and not the greatest value. Um, but his role in the offense is solidified now, and they're going to run it through him. The reason he is such a good play is because Jacksonville's offense isn't all that good in the passing game, right? That's because Trev does still have some upside um, with his legs. He's The last couple of weeks, he's been running a little bit more, so that's kind of sapping some of the upside that you could have realized with Christian Kirk and Zay Jones and even Evan Ingram in the passing game. So Evan Ingram here, he's going to be seeing a little bit of steam, 10% ownership. He's one of these other, you know, kind of cheap sub 3K or low 3K rather tight ends that you can keep in the mix. Uh, 10% is probably a bit aggressive on the ownership side for him, however. Uh, Zay Jones I do like. He's also seeing a little bit of steam, uh, 4,400. I mean, by all accounts, Jacksonville's going to be trailing in this game pretty aggressively. Chiefs are laying nine, and the total is 51.5. This is the highest total on the board this week. So, by all accounts, we're expecting, you know, fireworks here. Um, but we got to keep in mind that Chiefs' defense isn't all that horrific, and Jacksonville's pass offense isn't all that great. So, got to kind of temper our expectations a little bit and just kind of be aware that we may be buying into some elevated price tags on Christian Kirk at 5,900 with some elevated ownership as well. So, just something to keep in mind. Um, if I were going to play the Jacksonville side of this game, which I do like, exposure to Trev at 6%, 7%, 5,400 is pretty good. He's got some rushing upside, as I mentioned. I would play him with ETN because most of the offense is going to run through him. And then I play him with a single pass catcher like a Zay Jones or an Evan Ingram or a Christian Kirk. Uh, I would prefer to probably stay away from full three-man stacks. Uh, but if you're stacking this game a bunch of different ways, I think that's still a, a viable construction. Uh, wouldn't touch the Jaguars even at 2,100 against the Chiefs defense. Um, I mean, they're 2,100 and, and totally unowned, so it's not unheard of that Patrick Mahomes turns the ball over. Worse plays that you could make than a 2,100 unowned defense, but um, personally, I'm not touching them. I just, I mean, they're probably going to give up 35 points this week. So, um, KC on the other side, uh, I really do like getting to the KC offense here. Patrick, Pat Mahomes at 7,900. It's a little stiff, but uh, he is the highest projected, highest value play of the week, point per dollar, and that's really hard to do at you know, pushing 8,000, um, especially for a quarterback. So um, by all accounts, you know, it did all across the industry, this is a very low standard deviation. Everybody is, is pretty high on Pat Mahomes this week. With just 13% ownership, and you would kind of expect that to be a little bit higher, but what's keeping his ownership down is naturally the price tag, right? So um, really do like getting to Pat Mahomes, and I would play him. My personal favorite would be Kelsey this week at uh, 7,800. think this is perfectly playable as well. He's also a good point per dollar, good value play, and projecting north of 20 points um, as well. And that's a super, super high number even for Travis Kelsey. Uh, Juju at 6,000, he's emerging, right? I, I, I say emerging. He's been the number one the entire season, but the volume and the production is now starting to show up a little bit more for Juju. Um, but at 6,000, I think it's probably a little bit stiff, uh, given the number of other pass catchers that uh, KC has available. Um 16% ownership, I, think, I mean, I think it's fine, right? It, it's not that you fade Juju here. Um, it's just he's not my favorite play personally. I prefer to get to a really, really, really good tournament play down here in Kadarius Tony at 5,000. McCole Hardman was just announced out. So we'll probably see the ownership number steam a little bit on Tony um, going into the weekend. And we'll probably see the ownership number on Juju come down a tiny bit. And maybe some of that will spill over to MVS at 4,100, which I think is a fine play. Another one of those guys uh, kind of in the low 4K range that we can play in addition to like a, a DPJ or something like that. Um, but I really do like Tony here at 5,000. He's going to play kind of the, the gadget role that Tyree Kill vacated a little bit. Um, and this kid is an athlete, man. He won't be played. Uh, even if his, his ownership does steam a little bit, it's not going to get north of 5% um, outside of some outlier 
tournaments or, or contests or something. Um, at five thousand, like he, he's just flat overpriced, right? For the for the workload that he's very likely to get. Um, that said, he's he's got the upside still to blast through this price tag, and one of these weeks, um, he's he's gonna pop really really hard, and they're gonna throw him two or three screens. He's gonna and he's gonna Odell Beckham his way into the end zone and just bust a slant for 65 yards and do it twice or something. So, um, just be aware of that. It it you are buying um, you know something expensive here, but the ownership discount that you're getting is is kind of um, sort of counteracting that a little bit. Um, Chiefs defense, I wouldn't really touch 3,400. Uh, I don't think it's the worst play in the world, um, but probably a little bit pricey. I would stay off of the run game almost entirely here. Certainly for a CEH, it's 5,800. Um, and I don't really want Isaiah Pacheco either uh, at 5000 They're both too expensive for the workload that they're getting. And I prefer to just get to the passing game. Um, don't really want any Jarek McKinnon either. So they've got a three-man backfield here. They're splitting. Like, CEH is basically getting phased out, and he's the most expensive. So um, they're giving carries to three of these guys here. And... Um, you know, that makes it really, really difficult to play in DFS. So, <clears throat> excuse me, favorite ways to play this would be Mahomes with Kelsey and one other pass catcher like Tony. If you want to, um, if you're playing chalky other pieces, like a, a chalky, you know, Greg Dulcich and then flexing a Travis Kelsey, running a double tight end type of build or something like that. Um, or you're playing some chalky running backs with them, uh, something like that, like a Damian, cheap Damian Pierce or something. Um and you need, like, a way to get different, throw in a Kadarius Tony. Don't think that's bad. Um, it's not a super high probability play, but it's going to it's gonna pop one of these weeks. This kid is very, very talented. Um, you can also play, like I said, MBS. I think that's fine as well. Uh, that's probably the favorite way for me to play the game is to focus on Kansas City and run it back with, like, an ETN uh, or a Zay Jones or something like that. So let's move on. Um, we spent a lot of time on that game, but I think it's pretty warranted. New Orleans and Pittsburgh, we can kind of blow through this game a little bit quicker. Uh, really nothing I want to do with most of this game. New Orleans was awful on Monday night uh, against Baltimore. And Pittsburgh, I, I don't think they're going to be able to stifle New Orleans nearly as, as well as Baltimore did. Um, but, man, they were bad. So... That said, I don't really think even at 5,500 and a depressed price tag for Andy Dalton, I don't really think you can get to it. Um, you're going to need, in order for Dalton to kind of get there, you're going to need Pittsburgh to score a little bit too. And, and I'm not sure where they're going to score on the other side. Um, I don't really want to play Kenny Pickett and really, like, I don't want to play Deontay Johnson or anything. So, um, you know, it's going to be kind of hard for New Orleans to just put up a lot of points in this spot because Pittsburgh's not, like, they're not very good, but it's because their offense isn't very good. It's not because their defense is just horrendous, right? Um, obviously, if you are playing Dalton, it would be with Chris Olave. I'd prefer to play Olave probably just on his own. Um, now, I do believe that we're going to see Jarvis Landry back this week. That said, I don't think it's all that big of a hit to Chris Olave. Um it is a little bit because he will siphon some targets. It's more so a hit to Marquez Callaway down here. Traquan is still the deep threat for them, um, but they don't use these guys enough. Traquan is a guy at 4,300 that you can use. Uh, another one of these, you know, low 4K guys. I prefer to get to MBS in the previous game or a DPJ. I believe at the same price um, or very close to it than a Traquan down here at 43. Uh, Nobody's going to play him, so it, it's okay. But, um, you know, not something that's really going to pop for me. Uh, so I'd probably mostly just focus on Alvin Kamara. Uh, he's coming in at 18%. think this ownership is fine, 7,400. Um, yeah, I think this is a good play, and they're probably going to want to rely on him. He's likely to get a lot of work because I don't think they're going to need to or be able to throw um, or I guess have to throw is a better way to put it. 
you know, deep down the field and really like need to move the ball in the two minute or four minute drill or anything like that, because Pittsburgh's not going to very unlikely to be able to, to put up a lot of points too. So um, favorite play here would just be Alvin Kamara at 7,400 followed by Chris Olave just in some short pieces. Um, I really don't like Dalton because they could very well just use Taysom Hill and spell him, spell Dalton for like, you know, 15 plays out of the backfield and just let Taysom Hill run the wildcat or do whatever. So um, on the other side, here's Kenny Pickett, 5,100 is good price for him. He's going to pop eventually. Um, I'm not as confident that he is going to pop, um, as I was that Fields was going to pop eventually, but Kenny Pickett will, and, you know, he's got a couple of guys here that he could throw the ball to, George Pickens, Deontay Johnson, you know, these guys are not, um, not the worst wideouts in the league, but Deontay Johnson, 5,800 and, and 12% ownership here, I think that's a little bit too high uh, for the upside that the Pittsburgh offense is going to provide. Um, really do like Najee, actually, at 5,500. Uh, the New Orleans rush defense is a little a, a little bit attackable. We saw Baltimore really get after them with Kenyon Drake this last week, uh, and he kind of tore them apart. So... Najee, they don't use him in really how they should, I think, but um, he still has upside at this price tag, nonetheless. And if you are trying to get to like a Mahomes Kelsey build or something, and you need some cheaper running back exposure, I think a Najee and maybe a Steelers defense correlation team, I think this is a pretty interesting way to play this game. And I don't think it's bad. I think Pittsburgh could come out and win this game. Um, it's actually pretty tight. And New Orleans is only laying one, one and a half on the road right now. And this is also a low total game. So at 40, um, don't really think you want to be targeting offenses all that, all that heavily. But Najee uh, with some Steelers defense I think is okay. Uh, you can also play a little bit of Pat Fryermuth as a, another tight end that you just kind of throw in the mix. Uh, at 4,200, don't think that's bad. Would probably uh, stay off of Deontay um, at an elevated price and elevated ownership if I'm not playing Kenny Pickett. Uh, so moving on, Detroit and Chicago. Um, this is also going to be a uh, – it should be a pretty high-scoring game. Uh, I'm not really sure why, though, um, because – well, we'll get to Chicago in a minute, but the Detroit is like – is is really hard to peg, man. They've they've got an offense that can score, and they've got a defense that is terrible. Um, so really, every week we should be playing, you know, a hell of a lot of Jared Goff and 5,500. I mean, I think it's a pretty good price tag. He's popping in some of my my other metrics um, as one of a, as a top five quarterback play this week, and I think that's pretty warranted. Um, Chicago's definitely gettable. They're more gettable on the ground than they are through the air necessarily, but most of Detroit's offense is going to run through Amon Ross St. Brown um, and Jamal Williams. Okay, uh, DeAndre Swift, I believe, is hurt still. Uh, we've talked about this the last couple of weeks, and it looks to be proving true. Um, they're just not using him as the main back in the backfield anymore, and uh, they're giving all of that rushing work to Jamal Williams. So Jamal Williams was a really good play last week against the Packers. Um, he's, again, a really good play against Chicago this week. So uh, I think this war this ownership is pretty warranted at 12 to 15%, give or take. Um, and same thing with Amon Ra. Uh, I think this is kind of where they should be. Are we getting leverage on the field necessarily? Uh, maybe not. Do I want to come in at 40% Amon Ra St. Brown? Also, probably not uh, at 6,900, but I do think getting, you know, maybe a 25% coming in a little bit heavy on Amon Ra here is, is is pretty okay because I do like Jared Goff a lot at 5,500. I think this is a really, really good price, and Chicago is attackable. If we're expecting points in this game and the market is, you got Chicago laying three somehow um, and a total of 48.5. Um, you know, that suggests points. Uh, now, I made the spread a little bit tighter. I'm not. I'm really not sure how you lay points with Chicago. Uh, their offense is just dreadful, um, despite the fact that Justin Fields really went off last week. So, 
That said, I mean, I like Detroit. I did bet Detroit earlier this week. Um, I did get them, I think I got them at two and a half. I may have even pegged them at three. I, I can't remember. I did get them at three. Um, so, you know, I think that number is a little too high for the upside that Detroit's offense has. And, like I said, Chicago's offense really isn't that good here. Now, Fields obviously won tournaments last week, and you needed him with probably Cole Komet and could have even been a Darnell Mooney, I believe, was in uh, Millie winning teams. Um, Sheets could probably tell you a bit more about that. He came very, very close. Um, but we have to keep in mind here that a couple of things with Justin Fields. He's going to come in as the second most popular, could be even the most popular quarterback this week. Um, I'm not sure this is a very good play. I think this is kind of bad chalk here, and I'll tell you why. Uh, number one, he got a $1,200 price bump, okay? Uh, and on a quarterback, that is an outrageous move uh, in terms of price. Number two, um, last week he ran for 176 yards or 180 yards, whatever it was, and one score, and then he threw for three more. But when we dig into the stat line a little bit, he only threw for about 123 yards, I think. Uh, and that that throws up red flags to me. Um you know, he got a $1,200 price bump. He only threw for 120 yards. He just happened to throw for three scores. I mean, clearly that's an outlier performance there. But then he also ran for 180, uh, which is the highest rushing game in, like, the history of quarterbacks in the NFL or something crazy, or, you know. So we're seeing some noise here baked into, into the Justin Fields numbers, and uh, I think this chalk is probably a little bit high here. Um uh, now, that said, do you want to totally fade Fields? Well, no, because we've seen what he can do. He doesn't have to run for 180 and, and one and throw for another three or whatever, but there is a lot of opportunity cost when you're spending 6500 for a quarterback eating ownership on that quarterback at an elevated price tag when the offense itself isn't going to throw the ball all that much. Like, they're only averaging, like, less than 30 attempts per game. Um, and there are other guys that are cheaper that are going to throw, like Jared Goff, for example, that are going to throw the ball 45 or 50 times a game, right? So something to keep in mind and be aware of. That said, he is projecting across the industry very, very well. Hot, good point per dollar play and a very good value play. Um, and the ownership is following, you know, those numbers. So is he a bad play? No. Do I think getting exposure to him uh, at 15% is probably pretty aggressive? Yes, I do. Um, so personally, I'm going to be coming in under the underweight on this. I think it's just too high. I really don't like that full $1,200 price move on him. Uh, I think it's way, way, way too much for the, the offensive upside that they really offer as a, as a passing offense. And, uh, again, there's opportunity cost with quarterbacks here. Um, so how would I play this game if I'm playing the Bears? Well, if I'm, if I'm playing fields, I'm stacking him. Like, a lot of this exposure is actually going to be naked fields, right? Um, and because they just don't throw the ball, so they're just hoping that, you know, he runs into a, uh, you know, 170-yard rushing game again. So that's a risk you take when you eat this kind of ownership, excuse me, uh, on a quarterback. So if I were going to play him, it would be with uh, Mooney. I think you can play him with Claypool. Both of these price tags a little elevated, again, for how much they throw the football. Um, and the Darnell Mooney ownership at 10%, probably a little high too. I, I do like another one of these cheap tight ends, 3,400 Cole Komet. think this is playable as well. Don't think... David Montgomery is bad either. Uh, don't ignore him. If you're playing a bunch of teams in this game uh, with Detroit and, you know, you can run Detroit stacks, run it back with David Montgomery uh, or something like that. You can you can run Fields, Montgomery, and a Cole Komet or something like that. Um, you can run Montgomery into Bears, uh, things like that. You can get different here without, um, you know, having to just, eat this chalk and or you know play a, a fields and and a chase claypool or something like that um which is typically how you'd get different in a quarterback stack uh so you can you can play pieces of of the bears here 
but I would be very careful. Uh, I get some major sticker shock uh, on these numbers with Justin Fields. So uh, favorite way to play the game is Detroit stacks on the other side and then run it back with some Chicago pieces. Um, moving on, Colts and the Raiders. Um, we're going to try and get through this. Like I've been talking again for about 45 minutes here. Um, one of these games, we're now into the uh, end of the afternoon. This is one of these games where the total is uh, is really really low. Um, and I I bet the Colts earlier in the week. Uh, I don't I'm not sure how they're going to win because their offense is awful. Um, uh, I'm not sure how they're going to cover, but I thought the number was too high. The Vegas uh, Raiders were laying I believe seven early in the week or six early in the week, um, and I thought that number was just too high. I made it four. Um, you know, so I don't think that Colts can necessarily win this game because you know, am I really running to the window to bet Sam Ellinger? Well, no, but I'm really kind of running to the window to, to fade laying six points with Raiders. So that said, in DFS, how do we really want to attack if that's going to happen? Well, the the Colts um, have actually seen money. You know, uh, the number has come down to four and a half. Uh, as I said, I made it four, and the total... Uh, has also come down a point or, or, or so as well. So um, that said, I mean, the Colts are, are a really, really poor offense. And even with JT here at, at 75, uh, I'm not super excited about that. Um, you could play the Colts defense with JT. Colts defense at 2,500. I think they're probably the better play um, than like the Vikings at 22 or, or anything crazy like that. Uh, I do like playing a little bit of JT Colts correlation teams. You can play Alec Pierce here, 4,100. Another one of these sub four, low 4K guys that you can get to. Um, 6,200 Michael Pittman is probably a bit expensive with Ellinger back there at the moment. Uh, but Ellinger is popping a little bit here um, in, va in point per dollar and value. He is l going to project pretty low, though. So uh, be aware of that. I wouldn't be stacking this game necessarily. Um, I think the Colts' defense is pretty decent, and it's really the only reason that they haven't lost all their games this year because um, their offense has been awful. You know, on, on the other side, uh, for the Raiders, you know, we saw Devontae Adams go off last week, um, and they need to just throw him the ball every single week, like give it to him every down uh, for all I care. Um, he's the best, best athlete on the offense, and... You know, we saw what he could do. He had two scores and like 180 yards on seven catches or something in the first half last week. So uh, he can explode when they throw him the ball. Um, Josh Jacobs, he's at 7,600. For his role in the offense now, I think he's probably finally, ownership-wise, back to where he should be. About 15% every week. I think the owner or the, the price tag is probably a little elevated still, so I'm going to stay off of that personally. Um, not to say that I would fully fade it, but again, I... I think Colts' defense, their run defense is actually pretty damn good. Um, so they will use Josh Jacobs a little bit in the passing game, but a 7,600, uh, I think it's probably still a little bit elevated for this particular matchup. Um, not crazy about Mac Hollins, but he will have uh, a production bump or should have a production bump now with Hunter Renfro going on the IR. Um, Foster Moreau with... Uh, Darren Waller also going on the IR. Um, he's going to get more regular work. And 3,200, he's another one of these tight ends I think you could consider. But at 12%, seems a little bit stiff. I'd, I'd rather, um, you know, go elsewhere. If I'm going to, I would rather pay 200 more and, and, and go get Greg Dulcich, for example, uh, rather than Foster Burrow. I think the workload is probably just a little bit more solidified. Um, they just don't use the tight end enough in this offense for whatever reason. Uh, under Josh McDaniels. So, um, not crazy about Matt Collins, but you can play him. It's okay. Um, Raiders defense, I'm not wild about either at this price tag. 3800 is just too much. So, favorites here would be just Devontae, a little bit of Josh Jacobs maybe. Um, if you do want to play Derek Carr at 5600 I don't think it's awful. Um, but I, I think you're going to need the Colts to score on the other side uh, in order to make that a viable play. And I'm really not sure how that's going to happen. So let's move on now to Arizona and the Rams. Another total that's been bet down pretty hard, actually three points um, off of the opener, sitting at 40 and a 
40, 40 and a half right now, from 43 and a half. You got the Rams laying um, a full three. I made it a little bit tighter because I think both offenses here are bad, and I think both defenses are attackable. Um, I think the adjustment to the downside in this game on the total is probably a bit aggressive. Um, I mean, this game is in L.A. It's not like this is in Buffalo and we could have uh, a bunch of weather concerns or anything. Like, this is in a dome in L.A., you know what I mean? So um, I think 40-point totals in Arizona and the Rams with all of these different guys on the field is probably a little bit of an overreaction to the downside given how bad both of these teams have been. Uh, that said, I mean, they, they have been bad, right? Um, DeAndre... Hopkins, it, like he's come back and uh, he dudded a little bit last week, but um, on average he's still getting like 12 targets a game since he returned. So uh, he's still lock and load at eight eight thousand and six percent ownership. I mean, you're just gonna play him every single week and in pretty much every matchup. Now that said, he does get Jalen Ramsey this week, so not the best matchup in the world. So something we have to be aware of. Um, but. Still a very playable price at 8000 He can pop for 30 and he can torch Jalen Ramsey, um, you know, just as soon as as, as really it, Ramsey could uh, totally stifle him, right? So um, am I super jacked about 8000 Yeah, not really, but uh, I think it's definitely a playable price still. Kyler, at, at 7200 I, I think it's just too high. Um, he just hasn't been very good, and... The rushing upside really isn't there for him. Um, I would rather get up, pay another 700 for a full 5%, or excuse me, 5 points in aggregate projection and a lower standard deviation to get to Pat Mahomes. You know what I mean? In a a projected game total, literally 11 points higher than this game. So um, that just seems like a natural play. But, of course, you would be eating another 10% ownership on Pat Mahomes as well. So something to keep in mind. Um, it would be difficult to stack Kyler and and Nuke here, um, so I'd probably just prefer to play Nuke as a one-off. Um, unfortunately, you can't really play Zach Ertz anymore at 5,200. He's just too expensive, and the workload's not there now that Hopkins has come back. Rondale Moore, they are using him a little bit more downfield, um, but at 5,200... I don't think this is the greatest play. I don't think it's the worst play. I think it's an okay play. Um, and, you know, keep in mind, New Hopkins is going to get Jalen Ramsey, so it should open up. Uh, you know, Rondale Moore should have the the easier matchup, um, you know, because pretty much everybody is an easier matchup than Jalen Ramsey. So um, don't really want to play the Cardinals' defense. Could you play them at 2,700 because – the Rams have been so bad. I mean, yeah, sure, but they're coming in at 10% ownership. I think this is bad chalk also because really on the other side, I'd really like to get to the Rams. I think this is one of the stacks in a low total game that you could play and you could conceivably get there with. Matt Stafford and 5,600 I think is, is pretty decent. And 9,000 Cooper Cup, I mean, it's there's – it's Cooper Cup, and it, it's 9,000, but uh, it's still Cooper Cup, okay? And he's project, he's definitely the highest projected wide receiver on the day. Um, point per dollar, is it's not going to project that high, and value-wise, not necessarily either, but it's hard to get there at 9,000, okay? 14% uh, ownership, I think, is fine. Uh, he's really just right in line with where he should be and where he falls every single week. Um, Tyler Higby, we're going to play this guy again, and we're going to step on this landmine again. Um, at 3600 I think the price is, um, it is is good, and it it's warranted for the uh, for the role that he's got and the volume that he's getting. 11% is also pretty warranted. Uh, don't think you need to get overly aggressive with exposures, um, you know, to the upside on on Higby necessarily, but. Uh, also, don't think you fade him. I think this is a pretty decent play down here at 36. Um, and if you are playing a little bit chalkier and want to avoid a Greg Dulcich, throw in a Tyler Higby. It's it's okay. Um, I think it's fine. Allen Robinson, I'll probably stay off at 4,800. I think the price is just a little too high, and I'd rather just play Cup. Um, all of the volume is going to go to Cup. 
Uh, Darrell Henderson, this is an interesting spot here. Uh, Arizona's run defense is actually pretty okay, um, so I don't necessarily want to go after it, but I do think that playing the Rams defense at 3,300 is okay as well. Um, could you get something like wild and play a Darrell Henderson and the Rams. I mean, it seems a super low probability. This is a pretty decent run defense over here. Not great. Uh, I'd rather get to the passing game. I think that's where Arizona is more exploitable. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's move on and, and finish up here. Um, sorry, guys, it's been uh, pretty long, but uh, I kind of have a tendency to yap a little bit. So uh, Dallas and Green Bay, again, this is the – one middling total we kind of referred to at the beginning um, where we're, we're sitting about 44 right now. Now, this this game opened at, at Dallas 5, uh, Dallas minus 5 early in the week. Uh, I played Green Bay. Uh, don't tell anybody, but I did. And um, I thought that number was just a, a little bit too high. I made it um, I made it far lower. Um, and... 44 kind of suggests that we could see some some points fireworks here, but uh, really, honestly, uh, I'm not super interested uh, in playing anybody from this game, to be quite honest. Uh, can you play some guys? Yeah. My favorite would be Tony Pollard, 6,500, probably because Zeke is either going to be severely limited with a, a bum knee uh, or he's going to be out. Um, now, most of the industry, it looks like, is projecting him in at the moment. Um... If he is in, uh, I'm, you know, going to come off Tony Pollard, Tony Pollard a little bit, um, because it's 6,500 with both of these guys. If they are splitting work, even if it is like a 60, 70, 30 um, sort of share in favor of Tony Pollard, uh, it's still not totally jacked about that. Um, Dak at 66, I'm not not super enthused about. CD at 7,000, he's going to get Jair Alexander. I don't really want to attack that spot either. Um, let's uh, undo that. There we go. Um, so, yeah, not super excited about the Dallas offense here. Uh, on the other side, Green Bay, not super excited about Green Bay's offense because they're pretty bad, right? 5,800, though, for Aaron Rodgers, not too terrible. Aaron Jones for 72 is also not the worst in the world. Um, Dallas run defense is okay. So I'm not jacked about getting to Aaron Jones. Um, 6,100, Alan Lazard, also not super thrilled about, but... If the Packers are going to keep this game close, it's going to be with Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball, and it's going to be to Alan Lazard. Um, super low ownership here, and you know, don't be surprised, Alan, if Aaron Rodgers and Alan Lazard pop off for 130 and two here. Uh, I think it's very, very reasonable. Robert Tunyon has a little bit of upside as another kind of tight end that you can just throw in the mix. Um, not. A bunch of upside at this price, but he does have some touchdown equity. They'll use him in the red zone a little bit. A.J. Dillon at 6,700 is totally unplayable uh, at this price, uh, and the market kind of agrees. Very low projection, very low standard deviation, um, no value on him really whatsoever. 2,400 I think is an okay play for the Packers at home against Dallas. Um, another one of these cheap defenses that you could do worse. Uh, you know, you could play – the Vikings at, you know, 17% ownership or wherever they come in, $200 cheaper. Yeah, I think that's a worse play than playing the Packers, probably against a better team um, at $200 more expensive. But you get them at a, you know, far higher ownership discount. So really not much from this uh, this final game for me. Alan Lazard um, and Tony Pollard on the other side. So, um that's really it. Quickly, we'll go through, I guess, favorite stacks. Really like Cleveland up here against Miami. Uh, I think Buffalo with some Case Keenum, Steph Diggs teams is, is pretty decent as well. Um, One-offs from Houston and the Giants mostly. Um, you can run it back up here in Buffalo with like some Justin Jefferson or some TJ Hawkinson. think that's okay as well. Run it back with some uh, Tyreek or some Jalen Waddell. Um, like Brandon Cooks. And in the running backs in this game with Pierce and um, Saquon. In the Denver game, like the Denver pass offense and Greg Dulcich mostly, uh, but really do like Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy as well. On the other side, I think we can attack 
with Derrick Henry and maybe some Titans defense, uh, if you want to play that angle. Um, Jacksonville and Kansas City, I think I like all pieces of this game. Um, my favorite would be uh, Kansas City and getting to some, I don't want to say contrarian, but uh, semi-contrarian and, and reduced ownership stacks with Pat Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Um, really do think Kadarius Toney is, is a good tournament play with uh, McCole Hardman out. Um, Jacksonville on the other side, I, I do like ETN as well. And uh, I temper my expectations on the Jacksonville pass game and its efficacy in general. Um, New Orleans and Pittsburgh, uh, not stacking anything here. Uh, do kind of like from Pittsburgh, uh, some Najee, a little bit of Pittsburgh defense, and mostly Alvin Kamara uh, from New Orleans. Maybe so, a little bit of Chris Olave. Um, Detroit, Chicago really do like the Detroit passing offense again. Uh, Jared Goff and Amon Ross St. Brown. Uh, I think Jamal Williams is also playable. Um, on the Chicago side, be careful with your, the Justin Fields ownership, and you can mix in some of the Chicago pass catchers as well. Don't ignore David Montgomery either, um, because. Detroit's run defense is also not very good. Uh, really don't want to stack much here in the in the Colts Vegas game either. Uh, favorite plays would probably be the Colts defense, um, maybe JT and Devontae Adams on the other side. Uh, Arizona and the Rams. Um, favorite from Arizona would be just New Hopkins. Uh, not super excited about getting to their offense, but I do like the Rams on the other side. Um, Staff with Cooper Cup and maybe some Tyler Higby, I think, are pretty good plays. Dallas and Green Bay, mostly just Tony Pollard and Alan Lazard here for me. Um, maybe some Packers defense. So uh, that's pretty much it. We'll have some – sorry it's, it's so long here, guys. But, um, you know, we'll have some projection updates probably another couple of times going through the weekend. And uh, so look out for that. Probably have two updates. Um on Sunday morning, or one going into Sunday morning, and then one after inactives come out. So uh, that's how we uh, how we're looking going into the weekend. Uh, make sure you show up for live, and uh, that's it. Good luck, everybody.